Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again today. It's Friday, Pashat B'Shalach. There's a beautiful verse in the prophet Micha, in chapter 6, verse number 4. And the, cha- and the prophet says, Ki heliticha me'eretz metzayim, because I've taken you out of Egypt, umebeit avadim piditicha, and I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, veshlach lefanechet Moshe, Aaron, umiriam. And I sent before you, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, and Aaron, and Miriam. Miriam. What is the prophet referring to over here? The prophet is hinting to the battle that we see that takes place in chapter 17 in our portion, Bishalach, against Amalek. As we know, Israel is weakened by the whole strife over the water, and then right away, Amalek comes out, it says in, in the chapter, if we look in um, verse number 8 in chapter 17, Vayavo Amalek, and Amalek is the big husk of those, that evil nation that always appears when Israel is weakening itself. And right away, the approach to this war, and this is a sign of generations, the approach of this war is the verse here in Micha, to bring three powers together, spiritual powers together, the leadership. It's as it says, Moshe in verse number, uh, number nine, Moshe Beno tells Joshua, he says, choose men to go to fight. So first of all, we're going to speak about the spiritual leadership in a second, but first, Moshe Rabbeinu sends out Joshua to gather warriors that are on a very high level. Anashim, as we know in Hebrew, means men of great might and spiritual might as well. And that's the physical battle on the ground, Joshua. The power of Mashiach ben Yosef, the power of the Messiah of Joseph. And then it says, Machar anochi nitzav al rosh tomorrow. I will stand on top of the mountain. Standing on the mountain. Why is it that the Torah emphasized that Moshe Rabbeinu was on top of the mountain, on top of the hill, the mountain? Because that is, of course, the um, connection to spirituality. That's the spiritual side of the battle. Umate ha'Elohim biyadi, and the staff of God is with me. So Moshe Rabbeinu, on one hand, is going to be on top of the mountain, representing the spiritual side of the battle against Amalek, and Joshua on the base of the mountain dealing with the fighting, you know, fighting against Amalek, who's approaching Rifidim. Rifidim is located near Sinai. And Joshua fulfills what Moshe Rabbeinu says. And then it says, right away in verse number 10, the same verse, the end of the verse, Moshe, Aaron, Vichur, and Moshe Rabbeinu, and Aaron, and Chur go to the, to the top of the mountain. Now here, as I mentioned before, the verse, this connects to the verse in Micha. I just read to you the prophet Micha. How does it connect? Who was Chu? Chu was not mentioned until now in the Bible, in the Torah. The first time he's mentioned is over here. Chu, our rabbis teach us, he was the son of Miriam. He was the extension of Miriam, the son of Miriam, of Miriam. He was also the son of Kalev, who was married to Miriam, the father of him. And, and Chu, as we see over here, represents Miriam represents that element of power. Miriam, as we all know in our merit, the Be'er, the um, well of Miriam, of Miriam as well. And from here we see the combination of the two sides of this battle. On one hand, we need the spiritual battle. Joshua, on the other hand, represents the physical battle. So we have the combination of both. They have to work in harmony together. The Messiah of Joseph is a physical. And that's Joshua represents that from the house of Joseph. And the spiritual side is, is from King David, as we all know, is the Messiah of David. That comes from, that's the spiritual aspect, and they work together in harmony. And we see over here, as we all know, that Ho, this individual, is not mentioned, and I revealed to you that he's the son of Miriam and Kaleb. He, it's very interesting that the, the um, if we look about the individuals that were chosen to represent the spiritual battle, it, it easily, Aaron could have easily uh, taken his two sons, Nadav and Aviu. They were on a very high spiritual level, right, until they offered the strange fire. We all know they were great giants. But no, um, um, Moses takes himself as the prophet, Aaron as the high priest, and Ho as representative of the house of David, because he, as I said before, comes from Kalev. Kalev, of course, as we all know, comes from Chetzon. Chetzon comes from Peretz, going way back, and eventually from Judah. And down the other line comes out King David. So we see that we have all these elements, these great, powerful spiritual leaders 
together with the, Joshua was a spiritual leader, but the practical spiritual leader on the ground as well. And together, they are working together in harmony to eliminate the husk of Amalek. Now, this particular event in the Torah, the Torah as we know is prophecy for all time, is teaching us how are we going to cope in the future with our challenges and our battles. We always have to have a combination of both of these forces in order to be successful. We look in the Psalm chapter 20 of Psalms, it says, Ele varechev ve'ele basusim v'anachnu b'shem Hashem naskir. It says, they come with, with chariots, they come with horses, and we announce, we declare the name of God. And Rav Kook adds, on the chariots and on the horses, we declare the name of God. Rav the Kook. We have to combine both world, worlds together, the spiritual and the physical, and we will be successful in battle. And this important, great important um, concept, this idea, must walk with us our whole lives and throughout history of Israel and all our challenges in history. There's a beautiful explanation um, brought down by the Sfat Emet. Sfat Emet is, was the, the Hasidei Gul. He was the second Admol, the second great rabbi of Gul in the early 1900s in um, Poland. And he has a beautiful explanation talking about these verses we just spoke about. And he talks about how you know, it's a Mishnah, there's a beautiful Mishnah in the tractate of Rosh Hashanah that says, Could it be that the hands of Moshe Rabbeinu do war, go to battle? <laughs> right? But he, what, what is, the, 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 the Mishnah asks this question. And the Mishnah answers is that in reality, it depends on how the way we look to the heavens. Um, if we're looking to the heavens, then we're successful. And, and when, when we unfortunately are looking away from heaven and not walking with faith, so then we're going to have our downfall. And the Sfat Emet explains in a very beautiful way, and explains these verses, that if Moshe Rabbeinu, he knew that Israel was depending on his hands being raised, he would never for a second let it go until they would be successful. He would, you know, he would not drop those hands for one moment, because it was dependent only on him. But in reality, Sfat Emet is saying something very beautiful, and he says that what gave Moshe Rabbeinu the power to lift his hands up was Israel. The way Israel behaved is what gave him the power. He, he explains the verse in a very fascinating way that when, when Israel would be govel, when Israel would be able to overcome, in other words, they would focus their spiritual energy above then Moshe Rabbeinu's hands would be lifted up. It was really depending on them. It was like the chain. And then, and then Aaron and Chor, we could say, would be successful in holding his hands. Right? We had to hold his hands up over here. But it comes from really, from, it comes from the nation. The power of the leadership of Israel, our, our leadership, our spiritual leadership, which leadership, of course, would be spiritual, right? Great individuals, great saints, they need the nation to hold them up as well. And when the nation, unfortunately, turns away, so the leaders are going to be weakened. A lot of times we look at our leaders that run the country of Israel, we can always say the leaders are a reflection always of the nation, of where the nation stands, those leaders are always connected to the people itself. It was an expression how the Aaron, how the Ark lifted up those who carried it. Really, they didn't need him to carry that. Aaron himself was, was bearing those who carried it. Um, and that's like the nation of Israel has to be like the chariot, like the Aaron to carry the, the leaders upon, upon their shoulders. And, and that's a great thing, because when, when people are behaving the way they should and focused on the spirituality, then they have that ability to give to the leaders to do the job properly and get the, get the job done on the spiritual end when they focus on that spiritual energy above and they can do it when the nation is walking with them. A very powerful message by the Sfat Amet. And I want to take this a little bit further. We're talking about Chol, Chol, the son of Miriam and Kalev. The same letters as we know in Hebrew are Ruach. We reverse those letters and you, those who know Hebrew, reverse them, you get the Ruach, meaning spirit. Chol was, was, was interesting. He was chosen, although Kalev, his father, was a great warrior, as we all know, at 85 years old in the book of Joshua. He tells Joshua, my strength today is like it was then. He was, as when he gave back the good reports about the land where all the spies were giving an evil report, and God uses the word Ruach, he says, Ruach Aheret Imo, he had a special spirit using the word Ruach, and that special power of, of, of Kalev, um, his son Chol, was bearing that power, and, the, and, and he, his focus was on the spiritual side. 
He was one of the great leaders of Israel. Think about it. He was chosen as number two, Moshe Rabbeinu, Aaron, and then Chol. Fascinating. Think about how, how, of course, that was the power of his mother, Miriam, as we said, as the prophet Micha tells us. He was that special spiritual power. Unfortunately, later on we see, and in, 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 we're going to read about it very soon, in the two weeks, in the book of Exodus, how Chol was one of those who, who was a great Messiah Nefesh. He had tremendous Messiah Nefesh of giving from himself for the nation. When the nation was sinning with, with the spies, as we see, I'm sorry, sinning with the calf. Well, first of all, Moshe Rabbeinu goes to the mountain, and it's Aaron and Chol that are standing together on the mountain, right below the mountain there. As, as we know, Joshua was below the mountain. They were in another level, um, Aaron and Chol. And, and Chol sees what's happening. When Moshe Rabbeinu is late coming down from the mountain, and he runs over and he reproves him. How can you do this? How can you do this with the golden calf? And he's murdered. Terrible tragedy which takes place. But his spirit goes on. His ruach continues. And we know his grandson is Bitzalel. His grandson is the one that is the architect of the temple, of the tabernacle. And that special power, and later on, of course, as we all know, comes out of him, King David. So although there are the, the evil forces, we know the, 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 the sinning of the golden calf is a terrible tragedy. And it was, it was Klipot, it was the Erev Rav Klipot of the mixed multitude. But the whole, you know, the, the, power, the spiritual power of whole can never be destroyed. And that continued on, as we see later on in his, in his um, progeny in, in Bitzalel and later on in King David. And this is the le- message that the Torah is giving us here for generations, that we must always realize that the nation has the ability to lift up its leaders by their spiritual behavior, when they are focused on Hashem, when they are focused on, on their faith in God and rely on God, then they will give energy to the spiritual leaders to make the right decisions and to do the right things. But if God forbid it's, it's the other way around, it's going to weaken our leadership today in Israel. More than any time in modern Israel today, we are in need greatly of leadership. And the nation is so divided, we have to realize this is a message that we must unite our forces together as brothers, and to focus on our faith in Hashem, and we will come, we will overcome any obstacle. We will be successful in leadership, in what our leaders were able to achieve. If it was for our coming together, we would be successful in everything. And that must be our focus. We're beginning a new stage, the stage of David. Until now, we were building the land with Joseph, and now we are reaching the spiritual stage where we have to look to our leaders for true leadership and give that energy to them by our proper behavior. And this is a great lesson for all of us and for our generations. And I think um, if we are able to, what we say in Hebrew, lafnim, to internalize this, we will have a great effect on making great changes in our land. Shabbat shalom, b'sorot tovot, b'shuot, b'nechamot.